Welcome back. With me is Alice Hinshaw. We've covered living wills, durable powers of attorney, and advanced directives. And now we're going to talk about physician orders for life-sustaining treatment, or POLSTs. So first of all, Alice, can you just explain to us why are POLSTs valuable to have? A POLST is uh, incredibly important toward the last of life, the, the end of life. The, a POLST is, it says physician's order, it is the doctor's order and directive to medical providers. So the, it, this, is, this is the doctor talking and it is how the caregiver is to react to certain situations. Okay, so if I have advanced directives in place, do I need a POLST or why would I still need a POLST? Advanced directives are your statement of your wishes, your values, what you want done, and what's important to you. So it does give certain directives, but the POLST is the, the document that the doctor initiates, and, and let me step back for a moment. The POLST isn't generally done early on in life. The POLST is when there may be emergency situations and the doctor anticipates that those decisions are going to need to be made. So the POLST is like uh, CPR, do not resuscitate. We've all heard people say what they want to do in certain circumstances. The doctor's order is what puts that into place. So you can speak with your doctor early on and you can have that in your medical records. What you want the doctor to do in certain circumstances. Okay. But it's not, those things aren't generally covered in the first two documents that we discussed. Okay, can I use either advanced directive or a POLST to identify my agent or my power of attorney? The POLST does not identify an agent. Uh, the POLST is, it's like the doctor writing a prescription or an order to the provider saying, do not resuscitate CPR. The patient may sign that, the um, agent may sign that with the doctor. But that's the difference. So. The durable power of attorney for healthcare is where you assign your agent. Okay. The living will does not assign an agent. Okay. And if I have a POLST in place and my health condition changes, then what happens? If the POLST is in place and your living, uh, your, your conditions change, your medical conditions, the doctor is responsible to react and to make adjustments for the care that you're going to receive. Now, Taking that again, a step back, the other documents, the living will and the door of a, uh, power of attorney for medical are living documents that you can change throughout your lifetime as long as you're competent to do so. Okay. So if, you're, if your religious tenets change, if your life values change, or you want to change your agent, those documents are all subject to change throughout your life. So this might be a little bit of a touchy topic, but can you use your POLST to request a physician-assisted suicide? No. Um, the, the POLST documents are intended to apply to a natural death. And so you know, we, have a, we have some very, we, we have debates continually about physician-assisted suicide. Um, physicians, cannot be involved in ordering the procedures that would hasten death for the purpose of suicide. And what happens if I have a pulse and then I'm in a different state? Maybe I'm visiting and something happens. If you have a, first of all, if you have a pulse, probably you're not gonna be doing a lot of traveling. Okay. Because, because you're in a condition where the doctor has, is making some final orders. Your other documents, however, you're right on. You need to take those with you. Take a copy with you when you travel, and that helps to give providers in other states uh, some assistance in your, in your decisions. Okay, and so what we're, we're talking about putting these documents in place, mm -hmm. but just to make sure people understand just how important these are, what happens if I don't have any advanced directive? Well, um, if you don't have these in place, someone has to make decisions. Somebody has to make the calls. And this puts your medical providers, your care folks, 
hospice or anybody else, and your family particularly, in a, in a stressful situation. Because when you need these decisions made, somebody's going to make them. Mm -hmm. And the family members don't always agree on what mom or dad would want. So it, it creates stress amongst the family. It can create disputes that last a very long time. Yeah, and that's hard. So this is a gift that you're giving to your family by putting these into place. Can you give us a few scenarios about when, you talked about these being living documents. Mm -hmm. When are times when people might need to make changes? Well, uh, as I mentioned, if uh, religious beliefs uh, are often in the durable power of attorney for health care. And you state what your religious tenants are and how you want, for example, blood products. If you don't want certain blood products or procedures used. So that's something you would change. As we age, our life values change. And we get more resolute in what we want. And so oftentimes there are more clear statements made and oftentimes it becomes more important for a person to say, I want to be treated with dignity, and these are the things I want. Perfect. So. Thank you. Thank you so much, Alice. Great information. Uh, next up, we'll talk about some of the decisions that come with aging, illness, and end of life. Stay with us.